Okay, so good afternoon. So uh, welcome to the uh, ICTP Safer uh, IFT series of colloquia. Uh, Eduardo Ponton is the organizer. He will be late, a few minutes late, so he asked me to introduce the speaker today. So it's a pleasure to introduce our own Sadan Adikari. He's uh, I'll read a little bit of uh, Sadan for those of you who don't know him. But he's a professor here for many years. But he got his PhD from the University of Pennsylvania in 1973. Then he did a couple of postdocs, uh, one at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, and at the Case Western uh, Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, he's currently uh, a full uh, titular, a full, full researcher at the, uh, at the Institute of Theoretical here. And uh, he was a fellow of the uh, Guggenheim Foundation in 1996. He was a uh, coordinator of thematic project of APESPI from 2012 through 2017. Okay, okay. He's, the, huh? okay, it's okay. he's the author of two books on scattering theory. And uh, no, his uh, research interests are, are in the uh, area of Bose-Einstein condensation, cold fermions, nuclear physics, atomic physics, superconductivity, superfluidity, computational physics, nonlinear optics, etc. He's the author of 256 articles with 5,000 citations, that's very impressive. We affect factor age of 34, that's, that's very impressive. So uh, today, uh, Adikari is going to tell us about Bose-Einstein condensation in ultra-cold atomic gases. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction, and thanks for the invitation to talk on Bose-Einstein condensation. And this year is the 125th anniversary <laughs> 125th anniversary of Bose and we'll be talking about Bose-Einstein condensation first some special properties of Bose-Einstein condensation I'll be t talking about interference vortex lattice formation atom laser quantum phase transition and is there only few because this is a quantum system we have studied quantum mechanics in textbooks which mostly talks about electrons and this is quantum mechanics in a different uh, uh, type of matter so we'll slowly introduce everything and there are some theoretical treatments Dep using various ways, mean field equation, variation approximation, three body interaction, and w in the end I'll talk a little bit about our current research on soliton and cell bound systems in three dimensions, and then concluding remarks. And boson versus fermions, so we'll be talking about atomic gases. So you have fermions and bosons. Bosons have Integral spin and examples are one hydrogen, helium four, lithium seven, and fermions have inti half integral spins and the examples are two hydrogen, three helium, and six lithium atoms. So the integral spins have an even number of half integral particles, spin particles like electron, proton, and neutron, and here and. Uh, even integral and <laughs> integral and ha half integral spins. And what is Bose-Einstein condensation? So this is, you have the atomic particles. So we are talking about atomic gas. So you have the particles here at high temperature, large temperature, room temperature. As the temperature is reduced, the size of the particles increase. So it really increases, the, this is the de Broglie wavelength that becomes the size of the particles. So if, if you have a hole of small size at high temperature, the atoms can pass through it. At low temperature, it cannot pass through it. And at very low temperature, this becomes even larger and there is big overlap between the atoms. And this size is roughly given by the thermal de Broglie wavelength and this is H by P is T to the power half. T is the temperature. And this was predicted 
when there is overlap, there's a critical temperature when this overlap happens and you have the Bose-Einstein condensation. And this was predicted in 1924. It has some history. Bose was trying to explain the distribution of photons in a black body, in black body radiation with respect to energy. He tried to find a quantitative formula of this distribution of photons. And he was trying to fit so that it gives the Planck's radiation formula. And since he had, he put some parameters, so I'll show the distribution function later. And that fitted the distribution and in, uh, gave the Planck radia uh, radiation for formula. And he tried to publish it and he was unable and he asked help from Einstein and Einstein understood the, the work and he published it in Zeitschrift of Physik. And he went a little farther. He thought that if the atoms obey these statistics or particles in, in place of photons obey these statistics, what happens? And he realized something interesting happens because at a high temperature, most of the particles can come to the ground state with this distribution. But he did, Einstein, I think at that time, he did not have much idea about bosons and fermions and these statistics here what happened okay so here yeah, this is a small video of what is happening so they have you have the atoms which are moving freely there and the temperature is decreasing and the atoms become larger and larger and move slower and slower Eventually, all the atoms come to the ground state. And there is overlap. And the giant molecule is formed. This is the Bose-Einstein condensate. The atoms lose their identity. And we have this condensate. So that there were two papers, one by Bose and one by Einstein. Yes, yes. And, but then Einstein didn't talk about condensation. No, Einstein talked about condensation. And Bose talked about the distribution. So we have the quantum versus classical mechanics. Bose did not talk about condensation. And wave and particle behavior. And we have a phase coherent giant molecule. And there is lack of viscosity and leakage through microscopic hole and superfluidity. These are these special properties. And another thing is infinite thermal conductivity. If this had charge, it would be a superconductor, as it does, did not have charge. Uh, it becomes a thermal conductor. So we show another video. This is this video. You will see it's from liquid helium-4, which is boiling at 4 degree Kelvin. And when it is boiling, it takes latent heat, and it tries to become cooler and cooler. And when it reaches 2 degree Kelvin, and that is the Bose-Einstein condensation temperature at this, in this case, boiling stops because the thermal conductivity is infinite. So there, there's no need for convection to reach a, an equilibrium temperature. And then you have leakage through this thing, the microscopic holes. And you can go superflow. That means it can go over also, like this, this superfluidity. And then if you have a fountain, if you make a fountain, this fountain will never stop without any pump. Like in superconductor, the current goes round and round and never stops for years. There is no friction. Sorry, the fact that there's no friction, I mean, they still feel the force of gravity. It still feels the force of gravity, you know? Yes. So, so once it is there, the pump was there. Like the, 
the, like the current also goes, goes around. But if you have a big force downward, then it may, be, may not work. But the, the, once the force was given, then it will, it, will, it will work. The force was given once to make the fountain. Something wrong. I, this is okay. Actually, this video did refuse to play inside the. So, liquid helium is a uh, is strongly interacting system. So you cannot make a controllable theory. A dilute weakly interacting BEC will allow a perturbative theory to be developed and we can study it in a decent way. So experiment of BEC in ultra cold, ultra dilute atomic gas will give that controllable perturbative theory, this weak coupling theory. So this was done by these people in 1995 and they got Nobel Prize for this in 2001. So you cool these uh, atoms using a laser. This, was, this technique was known before. So you have the rubidium atoms, which has magnetic moment. All these atoms have magnetic moment. So rubidium atom has one unit of magnetic moment. A laser falls on that, which has energy equal to the uh, most probable excitation energy of the rubidium atom. Like in hydrogen atom, it is the uh, 1s 2p excitation. That's the most probable excitation. And here is uh, some ns, always ns, n plus 1p. That's the most probable excita excitation energy this laser has. So it excites the atom. Once it excites the atom, it goes to the excited state, but it gets the kick from the photon. So its momentum is reduced, it moves slowly, but goes forward. Then it emits the uh, ele electron photon back and electron comes to the ground state. And when, once that happens, uh, it has less energy and it is prepared to accept another photon. So that it is again excited and comes back to the ground state and each time it gets a photon from the laser, it, uh, it slows down and in a, in a matter of one meter, it can cool down from a large velocity of something like, uh, uh, see here, uh, kilometers per second to micrometer per second. So this is a de Broglie wavelength lambda. And V is the velocity by half mv squared equal to 3 by 2 kT. So oven temperature is 400 degree Kelvin. So velocity is 3 kilometers per second. And this size is 2 times A naught of the hydrogen atom. 2 times A naught, A naught is the Bohr radius. So this is roughly twice the size of the hydrogen atom. And then it cools down. It can cool down to 0.4 micrometer at uh, 50 micro Kelvin. Uh, this is the capacity of the laser. It can cool down to that. And then for BEC, we need something more. The velocity has to be of the order of one centimeter per second and wavelength of 40 uh, micrometers. So then uh, this is the some setup how it is trapped. It, it has three electromagnets, these blue ones and the green ones, and the atoms come from the top and stays at the middle. And you, if it uh, tries to come out, then you have this laser which pushes it back with appropriate energy. And atoms have magnetic moment, so this trap is roughly harmonic oscillator type trap. And you have this external magneto-optic harmonic oscillator trap which confines the BEC. And this is a distribution function. 
both first round empirically and then it is interpreted correctly. This is the function. The interesting feature of this function is that when the energy is roughly 100 nano Kelvin, this is the trap energy of the order of nano Kelvin, most of the atoms classically should be here, but in BEC it comes down here at that temperature. So then you have condensation. So then it is not enough. So you have to cool further to have BEC because uh, the velocity has to be 1 centimeter per second to, for it to condense and the size has to be at least 40, 50 micrometer to have a big overlap. So then you have this uh, distribution of energy at the end of the laser you have there in that trap it is a distribution of energy because of collision and then you reduce the magnetic trap that the hottest atom ex escapes. So magnetic trap is reduced in size so the hottest atoms ex escape and so you have 90 percent of the uh, atoms which escape and you have only 10 percent which are cool which cools down and forms the BEC. So remaining 10 percent atoms have much reduced velocity of the order of centimeters per second and temperature of 10 nano Kelvin and pressure of 10 to the power minus 10 atmosphere and that was BEC of size micrometer. This pressure could be larger but the we made this pressure so low so you can have a perturbative theory weak interaction. So the atoms are very far away. See normal case the atoms are about angstrom away, few angstrom and here it will be thousands of angstroms away. Uh, this is the artist's picture of Bose-Einstein condensation as temperature is down. The higher peak means that you have most of the atoms at zero velocity and distribution of velocity is very small and here you have lot of atoms with higher velocity in this case it means. Oh, there are, by now there are many atoms which has been condensed rubidium, sodium, lithium, hydrogen, helium, potassium, cesium is a big list. I stopped at 19, 2011 there could be more atoms. Then how to detect that you have formed, it has formed a condensate. The detection is interesting. This is a cigar shaped trap, it is a harmonic, harmonic oscillator trap which is stronger in one direction uh, compared to others so, so that the condensate has form of a pencil or cigar. So when uh, Uh, it's okay. When the temperature is higher, micro Kelvin, you see there is a cloud, gaseous cloud and you cannot control it very easily. But now it is condensed, temperature is lower and wh once it is condensed, it takes the sh shape of the vessel, it takes the sh shape of the trap. You can turn the trap a little bit, the shape will be immediately changed which will not be case when it is not condensed. Like liquid takes the shape of the vessel. The vessel is round, liquid, liquid is round. So this is how it was detected in the beginning. But now there are many other ways to detect it. I'll talk about another way to detect. So this is a interference, double slit interference on optics. So light enters, coherent light enters through the two slits it forms an interference pattern, bright dark, bright dark. So, but the total energy of light is conserved. So same thing happens here. This is a coherent straight. In the other exp light experiment, you need a coherent light beam. Here you need a coherent matter wave. So once it is formed in a trap and cools down, comes to the ground state, it's a coherent state. Now this is, the, this is in the form of a pencil, now you burn the middle by a laser, destroy the middle, the two parts still remain coherent. Now we allow them to expand, much, much expand for many seconds. So you see the size is here 50 
micrometer and here it's one millimeter. So it is in the shape of pencil, but because of internal force, it changes shape and becomes the, take the shape of this disc, spheroid. And you see that the interference fringe is, uh, you can see the interference pattern here. Interference pattern here, black and white, black and white. But the total number of atoms is conserved. So in one place, you have doubled the number of atoms. In other place, you have vacuum. So this is the interference of matter when it expands. Now there is another way. So if you rotate it, the interesting thing happens that in the following, that it generates a sm many small, it's not moving. This is very interesting. So if you rotate a superfluid like this, first one hole will be formed. This one unit of angular momentum, but if you rotate, rotate further, you have two holes, separate holes, one repel each other. This means two units of angular momentum does not come close to each other. This is by energy conservation. Qualitatively, you can see that if energy has to be minimized, it's easier to have minimum energy when two, you have two units of one angular momentum separate. Because energy is proportional roughly to L square, like momentum square. And so, velocity square. So the thing is that if you have five square, it's greater than five times one square. So in case of in case of having five units of angular momentum, it's easier to have uh, energetically convenient to have five one unit of angular momentum. So this each hole corresponds to one unit of angular momentum per atom. So you have, this is experiment was done in 19, uh, 2001. You rotate the Bose-Einstein condensate. So this is the time, 2500, 200, 500 millisecond, then one second. You see here, very beautiful lattice is formed. So each hole has one unit of angular momentum per atom when it is rotating. So it has so many units of angular momentum per atom. But it disintegrates in this way. This is an experimental thing. And then with time it is destroyed. This is the correct order. So you can make an atom laser, coherent atom laser, like optics laser, the coherent light. So you can do many experiments. So laser was made, but no, so far no experiment was done with it. Now we'll talk about quantum phase transition. What is quantum phase transition? For that, an ingenious experiment was done uh, by periodic optical lattice trap. The periodic optical lattice trap was also an uh, interesting idea. You have two laser beams, polarized laser beams, that means electric field pointing in one fixed direction between two mirrors. So laser comes this way and is reflected that way. So it's, this technique was known to keep a laser between two mirrors. So what happens? The laser carries a uh, magnetic field perpendicular to it, propagating magnetic field. The other one will have a propagating magnetic field in the opposite direction. So superposition will make a stationary magnetic field. Stationary magnetic field, because these atoms have magnetic moment, it gives a trap. So this will make a, in two directions if you have two lasers, 
this will make a trap like this. So it's a potential well where you can put the atoms. You put the atoms. So atoms can be in a superfluid state or in an insulating state. So if the atoms are there on top, the atoms are moving apart. It can move from one tray to another, one hole to another hole. So this is a superfluid state. It can freely move. This is some kind of quantum tunnel, superfluid tunneling, which is different from tunneling in quantum mechanics. Tunneling in quantum mechanics takes time, like alpha decay. It takes months and years. But this is instantaneous, and this was predicted by Josephson by studying Schrodinger equation in his PhD thesis. A uh, very interesting work. And that if tunneling is stopped, then you have a situation like this. This is an insulated state and the superfluid state. Now, the experiment was done in 2002. So you have classical phase transition, which goes by thermal fluctuation. You have, you have to have variation of temperature. But quantum phase transition, is, uh, carry, uh, it takes place because of quantum fluctuation at same temperature, 0 degrees ten at Kelvin, you can have quantum phase transition. So superfluid phase, the is atoms move from one place to another slowly. Uh, so the number is not known, but the phase is known. Each atom knows the phase of the other. It's a, it's a phase coherent state. An insulator state, the number is known. Each hole, you know the number, but each atom does not know the phase of the other hole. So number known and the phase arbitrary. So our optical lattice trap, if it is more increased, if the intensity of the laser beam is increased, the trap will be higher. And this will make a superfluid state go into insulated state. So this is a quantum phase transition. This is like diffraction grating. How to detect it? So diffraction grating is that you have many holes through which a coherent light can pass. You saw that if there are two holes, you will have multiple uh, dark and bright places. But in this case, all the other things are destroyed when the number of holes is very large. You have three spots. So what will happen if you translate it into uh, Bose-Einstein condensation is two dimension. So you had that optical lattice trap. And suppose that everything there is condensed here, size of the condensate here. Now you allow it to expand 100 times more. When you allow it to expand 100 times more in two dimension. So everything happens in two dimension. So instead of this thing, when it expands, you will have these nine spots. Because the one array makes three spots, and a square box will make nine spots. So we have matter in nine places. Here you are increasing the height of the optical lattice trap. So here the whole thing is coherent and superfluid. So we have these nine spots detected after uh, removal of the traps and then making an observation after a long time when the whole thing has expanded from a point size to a very big size, 100 times more size. But if the optical lattice trap is increased, the interference pattern is lost. So the, you have a transition from superfluid state to insulated flares. So you can have whether Fermi gas can have similar things. Fermi gas as such cannot have similar things, but if you can couple two Fermi atoms, spin up and spin down, to make a boson, then you can have similar superfluid state. And that is BCS condensation, Bose-Einstein, uh, uh, Barry and Cooper refer condensation, but I will not go into that. This has been also done experimentally. So what is the difference from 
textbook quantum mechanics. So you have the uncertainty relation dx dp equal to h. The dp, the uncertainty in momentum is mass times uncertainty in velocity. So you have dx dv, delta x delta v is h by m. But mass of a BEC is roughly could be typically 10 to the power 8, 10 to the power 10 times mass of electron. So this is practically zero. So this makes the experimental realization and study of BEC much easier because otherwise in textbook we learned that we cannot follow an electron because if we fix the velocity then they, you cannot have the position. The uncertainty in position will be infinite. So you have to make a theory. BEC involves many body dynamics and you can do it by quantum field theory or you can do by many body Schrodinger equation and solve by Monte Carlo and other methods. So or you can make a simple mean field model which is very useful but may lose some physics. So if you are here at the level of Schrodinger equation, you already have lost some physics because Schrodinger equation is a mean field equation. You have lost the photon degrees of freedom. So you have, you have lost lamp shift, which you have studied in uh, undergraduate or graduate courses. So assuming that that doesn't contribute in, uh, anything to it, will make a simple mean field theory. So we'll, you can do it in, in different ways. I'll show only one way, the, starting from many body Schrodinger equation. So this is the Hamiltonian. This is the kinetic energy plus the trap, external trap. And this is the potential between different atoms, Vij. They make an approximation, which is called Hartree approximation, which uh, as the atoms are all in the same level, they, are, they occupy the same state. And you can say that the, uh, the whole wave function will be a product of wave functions. And there is no, not too much co correlation. These are assumptions. And some quantum effects will be lost because of these assumptions. Now, we take the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. These are the two wave function on both sides, and this is the integral over all atoms, i number of atoms. This is the hi, this part, and this is the potential. And easily you get this. This is one body term, and these are, these are two body terms. Because you have two body potentials, and you have two wave functions. So now we extremize this, subject to the condition that this is, this is one. The easiest way is that, why it is, something is doing wrong. So you used a generalized Lagrangian functional, which is that way function that, that expectation value of Hamiltonian plus this thing is the Lagrange multiplier. So we want to make this equal to 1. The extremize with, with respect to this. You get this equation and that equation. So this is the normalization equal to 1. You derive, make derivative with respect to psi i. So you get this equation. And factor of half is lost because you have two terms. And this is the equation you will get because this is valid for a all possible variations, so you take the integral out and this is the equation we'll get. So we get many one body equations. Now this look like a Schrodinger equation, one body Schrodinger equation, and you can have a time dependent form. You could, could have derived this time dependent form, starting from a more sophisticated Lagrangian, time dependent Lagrangian functional. But we just introduce it here till it is possible. Now you do energy and chemical potential. This looks like a hydrogen atom uh, Schrodinger equation. But this term is not the correct Hamiltonian. Because when I derived, we lost the factor of half. 
So this is chemical potential, the top thing. The factor of half is lost and the energy will be this. And that is the chemical potential of the nonlinear equation. So in BEC, all atoms occupy the same state. So psi i should be psi. And the, I remove the i level from this equation. So this equation will become this. You see this term here, this can be immediately summed. V12 and psi j is the same. It will get n terms and n uh, j not equal to i. So it will be n minus 1, j not, one term will be lost. But how do I use this equation? So quantum dynamics involves multiple interaction and the T matrix of scattering length is measure of atomic interaction. So we make this approximation, a delta function approximation. For two reasons I take this. First, this is very dilute. So all details of the potential will be lost. So we have a delta function. And in Born approximation, this gives the T matrix. So you take the Born approximation and A is the scattering length. So you put this into back, you can do the in integration immediately and you get this equation. This is the mean field Grosby types equation which is used to study a condensate. Now the scattering length can be positive or negative. So if it is positive, the uh, condensate is attractive, you know, repulsive and if it is negative, it is attractive. So we have this is the lowest order perturbative equation proportional to A, a lowest uh, like first order perturbation theory. You will have correction terms will, which will be higher order in psi square. This is a nonlinear equation. What is capital N again? Capital N is number of atoms, total number of atoms. This would be this could be one million. Huh? This term can be very large. Huh? This term can be very large. This term can be very large. Especially when the number of atoms increases, then you have an approximation, you can neglect this term. Because this is very slowly moving. So this term will be large. So you can solve this equation very immediately. The, the derivative is not there. You put a mu here and the psi goes out, you can solve it immediately. The wave function, you get the wave function. You can write a dimensionless equation, which is very common. In physics, write this. This is the trap. This is the equation, and you write this equation. And you have a transformation which takes this to this. Usually, you study this equation because it's, you, you don't have h bar m, c, all, everything is one. So, if you have a rapidly rotating B, let us see if this equation can the properties of a rapidly rotating, rotating BEC. The trap rotates and with the angular frequency omega around z axis. So this is the equation. This is the kinetic energy term. This is the trap. And this term comes because of that. But so how will you study a rotating BEC? And we are observing from outside. So in the rotating frame, the original Hamiltonian changes to that. And if you want, can go to the rotating frame, it's a stationary problem. So this was given by Landau and Lipschitz, and Landau used to study this thing at that time, 1940s. So he knew this. So the system is rotating, you go to that frame, and this equation will give the stationary solution. And this is the polar momentum. So if you solve this equation, start with a Gaussian state and then it starts generating vortices. So this is after you iterate the equation for take the Gaussian solution for psi and keep on iterating it, calculate it next time, next time, next time. You see after an unit of time 25 it has generated vortices. After a unit of time 50 it, it, it is more organized, is 100. At time 150, you see it is a perfect triangular lattice. And that is the perfect condition. 
to have the minimum of energy. This will not play. I'll take again. I'll show how, how it develops from a Gaussian state. It's a Gaussian state and time is increasing. And these are the vortices. What are the boundary conditions you propose? Huh? What are the boundary conditions you propose on the wave yeah. function? Yeah, it goes to zero at infinity. It's localized. And the vortices somehow come in from infinity? Is that it comes in from outside. In, automatically comes in because of the uh, extra term. Just so, keep on solving that equation with, with the boundary condition and that it goes to zero. It's localized, only that. This is two dimensional, right? This is two dimensional. It could be three dimensional because uh, then it's rotating. Uh, then when I talk about angular momentum, it's rotating always about an axis. It's not the angular momentum quantum number of hydrogen atom, which is in spherical, symmet spherical symmetric co coordinate. It's actually symmetric coordinate. And quantized version of L squared is L squared, not L times L, L plus 1. Say it again. Yes, how you take a size big, sufficiently bigger to accommodate the whole system. Suppose uh, imaginary time, uh, this is the BC is 50 micron. You take a size of 100 micron, then it's okay. And then you uh, force the wave function to go to zero at the boundary. So that minimizes the energy. In case of very uh, weakly interacting uh, system, so dilute system. I don't know the intuition. I don't have the intuition. It was predicted by uh, Avri Koshrov in 1957. Completely theoretically, there is no experiment, nothing. He said the triangular lattice will minimize the energy. And this was detected much, much, much later. He got Nobel Prize recently. So the angular momentum is fixed at the initial conditions, right? Of course. Hi, uh, angular moment, no. Uh, the angular velocity will fix the angular momentum. Right, so it's fixed by the initial conditions. The, uh, omega. Right, so it's fixed by, so you, you put it by hand of what omega is. Uh, we put it by hand what omega is. The number of vortices that we form must be, in the end, should be, uh, each vortex should have one unit of angular momentum. Yes, so per atom. One unit of angular momentum per atom. If you have one million atom, then total angular momentum is one million h bar. Yes, say go. Single atom, or it's identical. The, the wave function for the single atom, the wave function for the single atom is identical to the wave function of the uh, BEC Bose-Einstein con condensate. Only the intensity will be higher. It's the same wave function. And what I showed is the single wave function. No, no, this is rotating with the trapping potential. Yes. The trap is rotating. No, once you, uh, yes, once you increase um, uh, this angular momentum, the number of vortices will increase because it will be turning rapidly. Uh, once you increase this angular velocity, it increases. And once you increase the nonlinearity, it also increases. A linear system does not generate these vortices. 
So if you make this zero, there's no interaction, no vortices will be generated, dependent of how fast you rotate the quantum system. Sorry, so, sorry one last question. Where is the, the uh, assumption that you have a weak interaction system? In the A you showed? No, the, the number of n and a. A is small, n is small. If a goes to infinity, okay. the scattering less goes to infinity, you have a strongly interacting oh, okay. system. Okay. So you can have a dipole moment. So the, you have, can have uh, Bose-Einstein condensate with di, uh, atoms with dipole moment. The mo uh, atoms we consider, they have dipole moment, hydrogen atom, rubidium atom has dipole moment, but it's one unit. But there are atoms which for some strange reason, the electrons start occupying one electron in different shells. So it can this way accumulate five units of angular momentum or 10 units of angular momentum. Usually normal atoms, they are always coupled, spin up and down. So angular momentum will be one or zero, something like that. So there are atoms with very large, large angular momentum. And you, have, you can form a condensate with these atoms. And then the atoms are like tiny magnets. You can have this interaction between them. So they uh, prefer this figure-shaped attraction. So it has an extra attraction. So the, if there are 10 atoms like this, highly magnetized, they will just form a chain and will not, will be bound by themselves. They can be bound by themselves. Provided you can put in a line, but if you force them to put here in this fashion, there will be repulsion. So external trap, it puts it like this, it will be easily attract and form a condensate. So what happens if you have the magnetic moment, then uh, the shape changes, you see. It will be elongated in the direction of magnetic moment. The mag we assume that the magnetic moments are polarized. Now the last thing I'll mention is the phaseback resonance. Phaseback resonance is taken from uh, uh, nuclear physics. So Feshbach told the following. Suppose you are doing experiment in a system and this is the potential it sees. Nuclear reaction between two nucleus. So this is the potential it sees. And in this case, this is the potential between two atoms, the black thing. And this is the closed channel, the red line. And if it is so, it, uh, and suppose there is a resonance in the red channel, the closed channel. So what will happen that if this resonance is close to the incident energy, then there will be resonance in the open channel also. This is, this is what Feshbach told. But usually this, this is far away, suppose it is here, so this will not, this, if the incident energy is this blue line, it will not feel this. But there is an ingenious way in atomic physics to change the effective interaction between the atoms. The way is the following. You take, make a Bose-Einstein condensate of atoms which have electronic spins polarized. That means the all electronic spins are in one direction. But you can also make a system where the electronic spins of the, of the two atoms are up and down, theoretically. This system does not exist. But theoretically, this system will be coupled to the other system if you want to solve the dynamically the problem. And those are closed channels. Though this is not in laboratory, nowhere. But see, what happens you can, suppose there is a resonance in the other channel. So if you can go change your energy, then you can sit on the top of the resonance in the other channel. So suppose 
is a bound state or resonance in spin up spin down system because spin up spin down always attract but spin parallel they repel mostly so there is no bound state but the spin parallel system will feel this thing how can you make them uh, make the spin parallel system feel it you put an external magnetic field and increase it if you put the external magnetic field the open system which is spin parallel it will accumulate magnetic energy so its energy will change you go up and down you can make it up or down so it can go on either side of the resonance so if it is on top of the resonance the scattering length will become infinity so you can make the system strongly interacting from weakly interacting by putting it in a external magnetic field so this is phase back resonance so you can make change the interaction between the atoms so this is the crucial when phase back talked about this he never had this idea he died without knowing that it could be ever possible to change the atomic or nuclear interaction so now it can be changed easily in the laboratory now we talk about soliton in one dimension what is a soliton in one dimension so one dimension soliton is a solitary wave that maintains its shape while traveling it is generated from a balance between repulsive kinetic energy and attractive nonlinear interaction so there is always a nonlinear internal interaction so there is no collapse and there is energy momentum conservation i'll simply i'll talk about what is collapse because if you have an attractive system it can collapse but in one dimension there is no collapse so you can have elastic collision and be, because of energy momentum con conservation two 1d solitons can pass through each other in collision without a change in shape like this there is a wave there are two solitons what crosses the other one with our shape now the question is is it possible to have such a soliton in 2d and 3d it's not possible but you can have something very similar so you write the generalized gp equation so so long the equation had these two terms you will have obviously higher order terms the, the easiest term that we can imagine is comes from the three body interaction three body interaction will couple the uh, wave function of three particles three atoms like two body wave function coupled the wave function of two atoms that's why it was chi squared it was chi squared now this will couple three and this will it will be chi four and k3 is this three body force so this is not a repetition of the two body force because here this double line means that this atom is in an excited state this is feynman type diagram so there are many different higher order corrections like if you make a perturbation theory there are many higher order terms and which uh, each of which leads to strong repulsion and center and stops collapse so higher order term and if it is positive it will mean a repulsion at the center so this is stop collapse this is the case this is stop collapse so how what is the easiest way to see it you make a variational approximation this is the variational wave function the gaussian wave function and this is the energy functional i am doing some nonsense <laughs> didn't get used to it ah uh, this is the wave function and this is the energy functional this is the kinetic energy term this is half of the last uh, uh, this term because this is twice this is chemical potential so this will be half and this will be one third something like this and you can calculate the energy known the wave function you can calculate the energy and you can minimize the energy and that gives the width 
So you can easily calculate the width. And how can you see that it stops collapse? This is the total energy. You see, this is total energy. W is the width of the Gaussian, if there is a bound state. So if K3 was 0, the minimum of energy E is always at omega equal to 0. So 0 means a state of 0 size. That means collapse state. But any positive K3, you see, in this case, will make the energy infinity at for omega equal to 0. So, collapse is avoided. But now you go to one dimension, the, the, this term will remain the same, but this term will be 1 by w. So, there is no collapse. And two dimension, the collapse starts, this three dimension, this will be w square. So, collapse will start. But in one dimension, the energy at zero is really uh, plus infinity. So there is no collapse. So now you see, uh, you can have, if, if the attraction is very strong, you can have a bound state. If the attraction is wa uh, weak, suppose this term is not there, so the, then the stable state is W equal to infinity. That uh, minimizes the energy. So the Weak attraction, the leakage, it goes to infinity and strong attraction, it can have collapse. Now there are three, in search of this, I'll, I'll pass to uh, 10 minutes, 5-10 minutes, uh, some quantum bound state formation without trap. So there is a paper in Nature in 2016, uh, they, they observed bound states in dipolar condensates. And these two observed bound states in, uh, this is in science, in 2018, bound states of mixture of Bose-Einstein condensates, all without trap. The first experiment is on uh, chromium atom of dipolar things, a long-range dipolar attraction, and then you put a higher order repulsion to stop the collapse. And then the inter you make a mixture of BEC, you take interspecies repulsion with higher order repulsion. So this stops the collapse and there is attraction between two species, two types of atoms. So experimental pro procedures always BEC is made in a trap. When the parameters are pro appropriate for the formation of a 3D soliton, the characteristic size of BEC usually will be very small and very different from the trap size, the oscillator length. So it collapses but cannot collapse. So this is the self-bound state, three-dimensional soliton. So suggestion from, we have made some suggestion for future experiments on trapless BEC. First is one attractive BEC with three-body force. And second is the mixture of bosons and fermi fermions, which can also form bound state. So trapless BEC of attractive lithium atoms in a repulsive three-body and attractive two-body interactions, negative scattering length. This is a theoretical study. So this is the equation we had, the two-body force and three-body force. We take the scattering length of 27.4 angstrom. This is the experimental value of scattering length. So these atoms are attractive, lithium-7 atoms. And this is the three-body force. We put a three-body force. So then we solve that equation for certain number of atoms and certain value of three body force by numerical and variational procedure and they agree and so we are more or less sure a bound state can be formed, a soliton can be formed. Then collision of two lithium balls, so he, whether they really act like solitons. So we take two balls which are formed with 1,500 atoms and K3 is this. I put a small imaginary part there. This is the value of the three-body force because three-body three body force, it's a three-body T matrix and it has real and imaginary part. So I also included the imaginary part. The two-body T matrix at zero energy it becomes a real quantity which is a scattering length, but three-body continues complex. So we make them move, the two, we make two balls and make them move at a velocity of 18 centimeters per second. 
and we watch them at times zero, this many millisecond, 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 and density of the contour will show in the figure is one micrometer. So these are the balls, two balls made without trap in that potential and they are moving with velocity 18 centimeter per second down and up. This is the first spot and then it becomes here. So you see that in this way, in the middle case, there is interference pattern because we, uh, we put two balls, identical balls there, so they are coherent states. So they form interference and then they separate. So they separate here last. And they are almost like soliton, there is not much distortion in these balls. The velocity, I tell you, it's much larger than the velocity of sound. Sound is the velocity with which a disturbance will propagate inside the Bose-Einstein condensate. So it's 18 centimeter per second is larger than velocity of sound. But if it is smaller, there will be deformation. But in one dimensional case, there is no deformation. So now you have a impact parameter, they are separated. Even then the same thing happens. It, they behave like soliton or angular collision. They come in angles and they separate out without distortion. So you can bounce a ball like this against a hard, rigid, non-interacting -inter wall. So you come here hits here and this is like this and after some time it is like this and then it comes out practically unchanged. So in the intermediate stage it was distorted here. So now we talk about another possibility, the formation of bound state of lithium-6 and lithium-7 atoms, bosons and fermions. So we have repulsive three, bo three boson and two boson interactions and attracting boson fermion interaction. The fermions are by such non-interacting or repulsive. So the equation we have to modify, I will not go into details of the equation, but the equation is modified. This was the previous equation. Uh, this term is the interaction between bosons and fermions. One is boson and two is fermion. And this is the fermionic equation. And this is the interaction between fermion and boson. You have this. And this is the fermionic energy of the atoms, the kinetic energy of atoms. The fermions are arranged in different levels. So at zero temperature, they have this zero point energy. It's less than Fermi energy. So if, if it is full up to Fermi energy, so it will be n times some average energy, three-fifth uh, uh, Fermi energy. So then you can show that they form bound states. And there are some plots. In this, I included the three-body repulsion here to stop collapse. For fermion, you don't need to include anything because the whole thing is repulsive. So bosons, they are, and fermions, they are, have attraction, and this attraction is sufficient. But of course, if, if the whole system is at infinity, this attraction is not sufficient to bring them from infinity to uh, zero. But if they are near origin, localized, then this attraction is sufficient to form the bound state, and they will not escape to infinity. So there are some phase diagrams. Uh, this is the scattering length of the bosons. I, I took this is this is attractive. You can make it attractive the bosons, and still there is a region which is bound and unbound, and we are changing the three body force. So this is the number of atoms, of Fermi atoms, the number of Bose atoms, and this is the bosonic scattering length, and this is the boson fermion scattering length. So this is the some region of bound and unbound. And now the repulsive boson-boson interaction and same number of atoms. 
and this is the boson fermion scattering length and this is number of fermions. So you have bound unbound regions once you change the three body force. And you can put, put the wave function, you can calculate the wave function in a specific case by variational and solving the integral equations and they agree. Although the shapes are different, but there is agreement between variational and numerical calculation like this, this green one uh, with this red one. So this gives some average. So the concluding remarks. So this, these things can be formed. So experiments will come from single component BC, which I talked about briefly, and for boson fermion mixture, whether they can form this three-dimensional soliton. Two others are already detected, dipolar and boson-boson. These they are detected. So this probably could be future experiments. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Adikari. So we have time for a couple questions. Yes, just a second. Karia, I did not understand about laser cooling. Can you explain again? <laughs> laser cooling, huh? I, I'll tell to go. Let's go back. Any other question? <laughs> No, I'll try, I'll go back. It's easy. The idea is very easy. It was done in 19... <coughs> so, here's the oven, and the atoms come in this direction. They come in ground state, hydrogen atom in the ground state. And the most probable excitation uh, in case of hydrogen atom is 1s2p. And this laser has energy equal to the 1s2p difference. So then the hydrogen atom will be excited to the 2p state, but with a lower momentum. Why? Why? Because it, it received the momentum of the laser by momentum conservation. The, the laser is absorbed, so it absorbs some momentum. The velocity will be reduced. Because it absorbed the momentum of the laser uh, photon. Yeah, but the question is, it emits again the photons. Huh? It, it will emit again the photon. And then it gets a kick again. So but it can go in a, any direction, so some atoms will be lost. So but, yes. but some atoms will go in the forward direction. So you have to start with many, many atoms. Some atoms will be lost because that will go in the wrong direction. But why? Photon has momentum. The photon is gone. So you have it, what is you, momentum you have this? Doppler effect. When you are approached to the photon, it sees the photon with it the absorbs the momentum of the photon. So it decreases when it goes toward to the photon. And but so how do I know that it moves they are always photon. pushed back. No, the, if you go into many details, because the, once the velocity is reduced, the laser energy has to be adjusted. That is done by optical pumping. I did not go through it. So once the energy of the atom is reduced, because of Doppler effect, you have it's to change Doppler the laser effect. energy. Also. It's about Doppler effect. No, 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 no. The momentum is reduced because it receives the momentum of the photon. Understand. Why atoms moving towards the laser absorb? Uh, Photon and the atoms moving in the opposite direction do not. Because if the atom moving in the opposite direction, then it also is. Ah, I see. No, it is the Doppler. Because it re receives the impact of the photon. And photon had a momentum and energy. It absorbed the energy, so it went to the excited state. Mm -hmm. It absorbed the momentum, so its velocity will be reduced. Hmm. Uh, my question is, why do you need a uh, repulsive three-body potential to st stabilize, to avoid the oh, collapse oh, of the your... Repulsive three-body potential, you have to have repulsive, because otherwise the equation is too... But in, 
Because, because in principle, your two-body potential is already very repulsive at short distance, atomic potential. No, no. And in two, in two we you don't are in have two the two-body potential. We don't have the two-body potential oh, okay. in this model, uh -huh. in this very weak, weakly interacting okay. limit. Because two-body potential, I changed here. Because two-body potential is very repulsive at the center. That is uh -huh. true. But it does not see the two-body potential, it sees the effective potential, which is a sum of this series. This is two-body potential. So quantum mechanically, it can interact as many times as you like. If two, two balls, classical ball comes, it, it will hit once and go away. But quantum mechanically, it will, you have to sum the whole series. And this will become a T matrix. And as it is very dilute, and as they, they are separated, it will see the T matrix. So the two body potential could be, is always attractive at large distance and repulsive at short distance. But this scattering length can be anything. It can be either plus or minus. If it is plus, the system is attractive. The Bose-Einstein will, uh, uh, no, no, if it is plus, it is repulsive. And if it is minus, it is attractive. Sign change, sign, sign of the potential change. Okay, but this is three-dimensional. This is three-dimensional equation. But in two-dimensional, you don't have such collapse, right? Two-dimension is limiting case. It starts collapsing. I'll show you. Uh, it, I talked about. Uh, this is the energy. Suppose you take out the three body term, this three body term, you have this, and omega is the size of the bound state. You see that at zero, uh, if this is attractive, we have to have attraction because you have to have positive scattering, uh, negative scattering length uh, for binding. So at zero, the energy is infinite. So the system will collapse. This is in two dimension. Two dimension, it will be omega square. So it's the limiting case. It can be anything. This is one by W square. It is the uh, kinetic energy. And this will be also one by W square. So come to one dimension, which will be one by W. So the attraction will not be strong enough to overpass the uh, 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 repulsion, kinetic energy repulsion. So it cannot collapse. Just short, uh, huh? b because uh, as, as you know, in, in two dimension, you don't have such collapse in, if you consider just three bosons. I know, there is no collapse. But, uh, it's oh, okay. Uh, yeah. in two? Limiting case, it's the limiting case. And two plus epsilon dimension will be start collapse. So Eduardo has a question. Why? So uh, maybe you have kind of addressed my question already, but let me just make sure I, I understand. Mm -hmm. So it's again connected to these, uh, uh, two to two versus three body scattering terms. Hmm. So uh, in for the first term, so you assume a very dilute system, so hmm. you replace by delta function and so on. Hmm. So naively, one could imagine that the three to three scattering would be, should be less important. But, so I guess this, uh, the fish diagram, the second diagram you have there. Yeah, but uh, this is a series. That, sorry? This well, is yes. a series. Right, but, but, uh, so I w initially I was wondering about the consistency of the dilute approximation hmm. when this other term is playing an important role clearly. Uh, on the d density increases. Um, but okay, so this, uh, the fish diagram I thought for bosons at least gave rise to a, let's say this was a fit to the fourth theory, hmm. gave rise, rise to an attractive force. Uh, is that uh, here, no. here, I don't Noted know. Noted, uh, uh, this gives the attractive force at large distance. The potential is attractive at large distance and repulsive at small distance. So it depends on the coupling, of course, but... but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it depends on the coupling. Atomic potential is usually attractive at large distance and repulsive at short distance. For feet to the fourth... Is, huh? is, is like nuclear potential also. Okay, so for, for the fish diagram, uh, what is the range of that? So is, is there an effective mass that enters into that? No, not that this one. is the, the potential. The second, I'm talking about the second diagram. Or no, yeah. the second. The second. Yeah. Yes. So 
what is the ma is there some mass in those propagators that enters and controls the range of these of these? Uh this is the same mass of these uh, incident atoms. This is the so, so scattering series. So how how large is that range compared to the diluteness of the of the? I do not know. I did not compare. Uh, wh what I know that if you increase the, uh, the number of atoms, the density increases, and then this is not sufficient. The this term is not the lowest <laughs> order approximation is sufficient, and this will come into picture. Little bit, little bit, it will come into picture, and the, it, uh, this will break down when A goes to infinity, scattering and goes to infinity. Then it's it's unitarity, strongly interacting system. But so it does not mean the energy is infinite. Many people think that if A goes to infinity, that means the energy of the system is infinite. That is not true. It's a strongly interacting system. OK, go, now we continue. Uh, so I, I'm just wondering, so you think that uh, this truncation at this term is, uh, gives a sufficiently accurate picture that if you go and look for these things experimentally, you will be able to see this solid. Yeah, I think this. when A is small and uh, N is small, like N is few thousand, and N is hundred million, there has been a condensate, then there will be deviation. This equation will not be good because this term will be too big. It's not anymore in the weakly interacting region. Like liquid uh, helium-4, which I showed, Everything will break down because of very, very strong interaction, very dense system. You cannot make a theory. And there is no theory for liquid helium. There's another question. Yes. Are there any applications of Bose Einstein condensation? I don't know. The people ask even uh, Ketterly, who got Nobel Prize. Uh, th there is application in quantum computer, in tangled state. This is a laboratory testing ground of quantum mechanics. But real, real application like this laser is uh, showing this thing, still not known. That's what Ketterly <laughs> replied. But it has very strong, good application in quantum computing, quantum information science. Because these are, the co these are coherent states and you can study or test your theory or things like that. Okay, so uh, let's thank Kari again. Yeah. For the <laughs> there should be some refreshments, I hope. Okay. Obrigado. Acho que a pergunta do Eduardo é que você considerou a interação de três corpos. Sim. E a pergunta dele é por que não de quatro corpos? Não, não, não. Quatro corpos will be important later. First will come the lower, lower order terms. Obviously. Then you need to increase the density even further. Yeah, so what, what, what is the expansion parameter yeah. in the series? What is the expansion parameter? That's the question. The next question is are there any application of quantum mechanics? What is the expansion parameter? <laughs> I, all these things you can ask for any theory, like quantum chromodynamics, sure. when there is not. No, but you know what the expansion <laughs> parameter is in QED or okay, okay. chromodynamics. We don't know. So here it has to be with density and the scattering length. Yeah. Scattered. 